Hello everyone, welcome to this video all about geometric operations, which is a category in measurement and delta. In particular, we're going to be discussing area. So to begin, let's read this short description of what you can typically encounter in area related questions. So area refers to the region enclosed by a boundary. For these questions, a knowledge of the properties of general 2D shapes will assist in answering the questions. Be especially careful with questions in area involving increasing the portions of the sides by a certain degree. Students should be able to determine the area of various figures. Okay, so the concept of area is a fairly simple one. You've got a shape and there is an area enclosed within that shape. And there are various different formulas that you can use to figure out the area depending on what the shape actually ends up looking like. And I'm sure we're all quite familiar with the very basic ones. For example, we've got our square where the side length, if it's uh, called L, then the area is just L squared. And that's because squares have all four sides as equal area, sorry, equal lengths, which produces the area when two of the sides are combined. We've got uh, things like rectangles, which is just slightly more complicated as two of the sides are different. We've got our length and our width, so the area would be found as length multiplied by width which is pretty much the exact same formula you use in the square, except the square has both of its sides as the same uh, length. The other thing to consider would be the triangle and this side is the base and this being the height, the area is found by multiplying half times the base times by the height. Finally, the uh, most common thing you'll see is of a circle or some parts of a circle. Circles are found using the radius and taking pi r squared will give you the radius, sorry, the area of a circle. So I'm sure these are all concepts you've been exposed to at least a couple times. But for more complicated questions, what they'll generally be is that th these shapes get more difficult by combining multiple aspects of these more, more common shapes. So these are what's called composites, which just means it's, uh, it's composed of very smaller, simpler shapes. And for those, what's typical is that we can break it up into these simpler shapes to use these formulas regardless of how complex the shape ends up looking like. So if we have a shape, for example, that looks like, um, that looks quite ugly. Let's draw another one. Maybe it's got a thing that looks like that. Then we can break it up into the, the triangle over here, the rectangle over here, and the semicircle at the end, and use these formulas to figure it out, even if the question is a bit difficult. So those would be the main things to talk about in these questions. One other thing that's very, very common for the type of question for area is that you'll have any one of these basic shapes and the question will add some sort of boundary or increase the proportions of the sides. So very common ones are things like adding a path around the shape or adding a, a frame like a picture frame around the shape that basically adds dimension to the length or width or something to the shape. So then that is the case scenario where it is very, very highly recommended to draw a diagram. Well, not necessarily just for these case scenarios, but for any area questions, really, the first step would always be to draw a diagram utilizing all of the information in the question. But specifically for these types of questions where a path of some sort has been added around the shape, for example, if we've got a rectangle, maybe the question is that we've got a pool and we want to add a safety path around the pool. And we're told that maybe this side increases by, for example, two meters, and this side increases by one meter. 
So if we're given the original dimensions of the pool as x and y, it's common to make a mistake where we only add the dimensions of one of the sides. But we know that since the path has to go all around the pool, there is actually a second side that we need to consider. So really make sure you draw the diagram and make sure we realize that this is the original length, this is one meter, and this is one meter. So we would actually have to add another number to these dimensions for the, the actual path dimension to be correct. So those would be some things to watch out for whenever you tackle area related questions. Now, that's enough of an introduction since these questions do tend to be fairly straightforward as long as you recognize which formula to use to figure out the area. Let's see if we can apply the knowledge by tackling this example question. Okay, so in this question it says, Abby wanted to pave a path around her garden with tiles. If the tiles are squares with length 5 meters and the garden has dimensions of 20 by 10 meters, what is the area of all the tiles? So here we see exactly one of the questions we actually mentioned while going through the description. We talked about how a common error is to actually forget to add on the extra uh, tile or whatever it is they added around the original area. So we know that one of the first steps that we need to make sure we do is to draw a diagram. And thankfully, they have started us off by giving us this uh, very simple picture of her garden and her tiles. So we're told the information that her tiles consist out of squares. And uh, the question doesn't provide this information in detail, but we can assume that the tile, since it is five meters, it's quite large enough to cover the entire pathway. So we don't need um, multiple squares like this. It's just going to be the one square. So if these tiles are going to consist the area of her path, then we need to figure out how to figure out that area. And we can kind of see that it's, even if it is kind of like a ring shape, it's essentially composed of a composite shape. You've got two rectangles. You've got the big area of the rectangle of the pathway and the path, sorry, the pathway and the garden, and you've got the area of the garden itself. So if you take away the area of the garden from this larger area, then all you're left with is the garden path pile, which is exactly how we're going to answer this question. So knowing that the tile is five meters and five meters, so it's a square, we can see that what's actually happening in this question is that we're adding five meters to either sides of this garden, like so. So that means the we can figure out the area of the garden plus the tiles. And since it's in the shape of a rectangle, we know that the formula is going to be the length times by the width. Now we can tell what the length is because that's going to be this line here. And this part, <coughs> this part is 20 meters, the original length. And we also add two five meters on each side, just composing of the tire. So the length is going to be 20 plus five plus five. And the same thing is going to happen to the width. So we've got this length as 10 meters, but we also add two five meter lengths on each side thanks to the tile. So that's going to be 10 plus five plus five. So using the rules of bid mass or bod mass, we know that we need to do whatever's in the brackets first before we do anything else. So 20 plus five plus five is equal to 30 times by 10 plus five plus five is equal to 20, sorry. So the area of the garden plus the tiles is equal to 600 meters squared. Now the area for the garden itself is much simpler. It is also a rectangle, so it uses the exact same formula and we're told what the length and width is. 
twenty by ten meters. So that is equal to two hundred meters squared. So if we want the area of just the tiles, that's going to be the area of the garden plus the tiles minus the area of the garden. So we know what those values are. The garden and tiles area is equal to 600 meters squared and the area of just the garden we just figured out to be 200 meters squared. So we can tell that the tiles consist of 400 meters squared, which means that our final answer is option A. Okay, so that question was a good example of how a diagram can be very helpful in understanding conceptually what's going on in the question and make sure we don't make any mistakes when we complete the question. Another thing was that we applied our knowledge of how to find the area of simple shapes like rectangles to figure out the more difficult shape of this little rectangle ring thing in the question. So those would be the main techniques that I would utilize in area related questions. And I hope these help you out in the future. Thanks everyone so much for listening to this video.